Okay, question three. The two forces, each of magnitude 4 newtons and a resultant of magnitude 6, calculate the angle between the two 4 newton forces. Right. Um, so I, it's worth maybe kind of looking at a couple of different ways of doing this. The way my instinct for doing this, which is perhaps not the best way of doing it, was to say here we have the two forces. If, if, we're, if we're seeing them there with a... The resultant has a magnitude of 6 newtons, um, then I'm going to draw them like that. And I'm going to draw them as having an angle, let's call it alpha, between them. Okay, and I know that the resultant of this is 6 newtons. So, having drawn those two forces like that, I'm going to resolve in each of my two directions to get my horizontal and vertical forces. So, in that direction, the horizontal direction, my resultant force is 4 plus 4 cos alpha. And in the vertical direction, my resultant force is 4 sine alpha. That's what I've got. So actually, this relates to a, a force diagram that looks like this. There is 4 plus 4 cos alpha. There is 4 sine alpha. And the resultant of that diagram is a force of 6 newtons. Now that information tells me that by Pythagoras' theorem, 6 squared is 4 sine alpha squared plus 4 plus 4 cos alpha squared. Okay, that's a Pythagoras' theorem calculation based on that, which tells me that 36 is 16 sine squared alpha plus 16 plus 32 cos alpha plus 16 cos squared alpha. I'm multiplying out that bracket, that's 4 cos alpha, 4 plus 4 cos alpha, and 4 plus 4 cos alpha. And we see that that would give me that. Um, so we've then got, what have we got? We've got 36, let's take away the 16, that is... 20 is 16 lots of sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha plus 32 lots of cos alpha. Oh. And uh, that, is that now lined up again? Yeah. Apologies to all those who now are feeling quite seasick. <laughs> um, so we've got 20 is 16 plus 32 cos alpha. So 4 is 32 cos alpha, so cos alpha is equal to 1 eighth. If cos alpha is equal to 1 eighth, we do inverse cos, 1 over 8, and we get 82.8 .8 degrees to three significant figures. And there we go. And that was, that was my instinct for doing this, that question. That was what I did. I did it last summer. Um, thinking about it later on, I kind of thought maybe what I could have done with this question is think, if we've got two 4 Newton forces and the resultant is 6 Newtons, then the resultant must be exactly halfway in between those two forces. So there's my resultant of 6 Newtons. Um, Let's, let's call these, I'll, I'll use a different letter. If they're both 4 newtons and the resultant is 6 newtons, it must be, it must be the bisector of those two forces. And then, all I could do is if I now resolve in the horizontal direction, I can say that 4 cos beta plus 4 cos beta produces a resultant force of 6 newtons. which gives us um, cos beta, 8 cos beta is 6, so cos beta is 3 quarters. Inverse cos of 3 quarters gives us 
degrees and the angle between the two forces is 2 beta which is double that and of course we get 82.8 .8, and that's the angle that we're looking for. So that's a considerably quicker way of doing it. There's, there's other ways of doing it as well but either, either way is acceptable for that. Um, okay, part two says the two given forces of magnitude 4 newtons act on a particle of mass m, which remains at rest on a smooth horizontal surface. The surface exerts a force of magnitude 3 newtons on the particle. Find m and give the acute angle between the surface and one of the 4 newton forces. So, so actually we have, we have quite a lot um, going on with this, don't we, to try and work out what's happening. The two given forces of magnitude 4 newtons act on a particle of mass m, which remains at rest. Should we have a diagram? So I'm wondering, can I um, oh, fit it on here? Here's our particle. Um, So the surface exerts a force of magnitude 3 newtons. We've got the, the mass mg now, oh, the weight mg. If, um, if this particle remains at rest, that's the crucial thing, isn't it? The particle remains at rest. Okay, if it's remaining at rest, and we have this resultant force of 6 newtons, then the 6 newton force can only be in one direction, can't it? The 6 newton force can only possibly be a force that is acting in that direction. That's it. That's, that's all that we've got. Because if it acts in any other direction then this particle isn't at rest, if that's the only force is acting on it. So the 6 newton force is acting vertically upwards on the particle. Does that make sense? Are we clear on that? Mm -hmm. So if we resolve vertically, we've got that 3 plus 6 is equal to mg. So mg equals 9. So the mass is 9 over g, so that is 0 0.918 uh, to three significant figures, and um, yes, and uh, the angle, if we think about the angle then, well, well let's work out what was going on with this, if that's our diagram, the 6 newton force is exactly part way in between these two 4 newton forces, so they, they would be the two 4 newton forces that are on there. We've got the, the angle between them is 82.8 .8 degrees, <coughs> so this angle here is 82.8. .8. So the angle that the 4 newton force, that each 4 newton force makes with the surface must be that angle down there. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. I know that that is 41.4 or half of it, so it's 90 take 41.4, or it's a half of 180 minus 82.8. .8. Whichever way I arrange that, I come up with a figure of 48.6 degrees. I've just written 4 instead of 6. Okay, does that make sense? And the crucial thing about this question was recognising, it, it was just kind of slipped in there, but it was this remains at rest. That was the key thing here. That tells us that the 6 newton force actually um, it has to be vertically upwards, otherwise it would be moving from side to side on this smooth table that it's at rest on. There we go, and that's falling over maths. <laughs>